But I am very new to stand up. I hadn't been doing it very long, but I was a pastor for 28 years. Come on, somebody. And I'm used to speaking in front of people. I've preached in prisons. I've preached in places all over the country. I love writing material. But the hardest part about doing stand-up for me so far is the standing. (laughs) Dear God, I'm wore out already. I am hoping and praying that sit-down comedy will catch on. (laughs) But I'm going to tell you, we got ready to go on vacation to Florida one year, and my uncles were in another car, my cousins, my aunt, and they had their CB radio. My other uncle had his CB radio. Daddy didn't want to have one. He wasn't that cool. He just borrowed a walkie-talkie so we could communicate a little bit. And I was obsessed that summer with somebody called the Three Stooges. Come on, somebody. Man, I'm going to tell you, I ate it up. Every day after school, Little Rascals and then the Three Stooges. And, man, I watched it, and I got obsessed with it. And I talked like them all the time. Man, I'd walk around the house, all the time. And I don't know if my aunts and my uncles and cousins thought it was that funny or that it annoyed my father so bad. Probably a combination of both. But when you live on Hog Jow Road, to go to Florida, it takes you 40 minutes to find an interstate. And by the time we got over here to Ringgold on I-75, I'd done Curly, Mowed, Larry, Shimp. I even threw out a little Curly Joe. And my father turned around and he looked at me and he said, Listen, I've had it with his stooges. If I hear it one more time, I'm going to take 50 cents away from you. Now, I know some of you young people thinking, 50 cents, that ain't nothing. Man, I'm talking 1970s. 50 cents, you can buy illegal drugs. No, I'll teach you, you can do anything. <laughs> I had an allowance of $2 a week. I'd been saved it. I'd hit up my mama, I'd hit up my nanny, I'd hit up everybody I was related to, get a little Florida money. I had $25 saved up. Come on, somebody. <laughs> and my daddy said, if I hear one more, I'm taking 50 cents away. I looked at him, I said, wise guy, hey? Because I had to try it and see. My father said, Sue, get a pad and paper and write this down. My mama's just trying to go on vacation. All she's wants a little rest in the beach. She's digging through that pocketbook, finding a notepad and a pen, and she writes down, Richie, stooges, 50 cents, and a check mark. All this is being overheard on the CB. So then I'm getting provoked by relatives. And man, my, I couldn't stop. It's just a habit. And by the time we got to Dalton, I was down about $4. <laughs> then my father turned into the Jerry Lewis telethon. We'd go about 50 miles. He'd say, Sue, give us an update. How much is the boy down? Well, Lynn, we're in Cartersville, and he's down $9.50. I just get madder and madder. And I'm in the back seat, and I'm doing this stuff right here. And my daddy's seen it. He goes, write that down, 50 cents. I didn't say a word. Hand gestures. By the time we got to Marietta, I was down $15. Making $18.50. Tifted 20 bucks even. And when we hit Valdosta, I was down $23.50 a matter and you know what. I did my Chickamauga math and realized I had a buck fifty left. They were 50 cents a piece. I'm going to let it ride. And I let loose everything I had. Wise guy, hey? And my mama turned around and I ran my hand over her chin a couple times. My daddy turned to see what was going on, and I tried to poke him in the eyes. And he went. And then I just had a meltdown. I said, you took all my money. I hope you're happy. And I sit back there. Oh. Only time the whole 500 miles, we were all quiet. I heard my daddy say, I think I pushed him over the edge. (laughs) My sweet God-fearing mama, we hit the Florida state line. She tried to make it all better. She goes, look, we're in Florida. Aren't you happy? No, I'm broke. We're almost there. It's going to be so much fun. And I'm back there. (laughs) 
this crying. She looked over at my father. She said, Lynn, are you really going to keep all the money of your only begotten son for doing the three stooges? My daddy looked at me, made eye contact, went over to my mama and said, certainly. <laughs> we lived over there at Dorrell Apartments for about six months, and across the street was a family called the Zimmerman Boys. And I'm telling you, them Zimmerman Boys had a bigger vocabulary than little Richie. They were a little bit older, and I remember they told me one time, what happens in our yard stays in our yard. I said, yes, sir. That boy was only in sixth grade, and I called him sir, and I was in the third grade. He had a full beard on him in seventh grade. And man, they could talk. I didn't know what it meant, but I knew it carried a little power to it. And lo and behold, I picked up on a little bit of my new words, and my daddy worked on a Saturday, and he came home, and he said, I got good news, son. I'm going to take you and your mom out to dinner tonight. I said, man, that's awesome. Can we go to McDonald's? That's what every kid in the 1900s wanted to go to, playground, toy, and a hamburger. My daddy said, boy, I walk 12.3 miles a day. I ain't going to no McDonald's. We are going to the Piccadilly. Come on, somebody. You younger people got to Google the Piccadilly. Let me tell you, that's an old person's restaurant. Smell like menthol and menthol cigarettes. You go through the cafeteria line. And it was 40 minutes from Chickamauga to Northgate to go to that Piccadilly. You know how many golden arches you pass on your way to the Piccadilly? <laughs> and every one we passed, I started pleading my case. Can we please, 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 please go to McDonald's? They just ignored me. I'd start again. They ignored me. About up to Highway 153 there in Chattanooga, I gave it one last plea. And my father turned around and says, listen. If I hear another word about McDonald's, you ain't even going to eat at Piccadilly. You're going to sit there and watch us. And man, I thought about them Zimmerman boys. And all of a sudden, out of my mouth, I said, damn it, I want to go to McDonald's. My mother bowed her head and started praying and talking to Jesus right there on the spot. Daddy put his blinker on on that 1977 Pontiac Grand Prix muscle car, went from the left lane to the right lane, and eased onto the shoulder. He got out of that car, took off his government-issued belt, pulled me out of the back seat, and popped me three times right there on the side of the highway. Now, if that happened at night, CNN would be televising my daddy. Chattanooga Popo would have him locked up, and some of you people would start me a GoFundMe page. <laughs> Let me tell you what happened back in the 1900s. Truck drivers went by going, ur, ur, blowing their horn. Other daddies were looking at their kids saying, you better watch out, you could be next. <laughs> One woman wrote, on her window said, Lynn, give it to him good. I know he deserves it. It's what happens when you're the son of a mailman. I got back in the car. I was dry heaving, snot bubbles coming out my nose, crying, and my sweet mama's trying to explain to me that damn's not always a bad word. She says, if you take the N off and it's about a body of water, then that damn's okay. And if it's okay, why are you whispering damn? And I said, and I'm back here just flustered, you know. I'm just thinking, I still want to go to McDonald's. But I'm trying to make peace with it. And then we go across the Chickamauga Lake, and I see a sign. And I said it out loud. Look at there, Chickamauga Dam. <laughs> and Mama didn't bow her head, and Daddy didn't turn on the blinker. And I said, I guess that's all right. So then I said, boy, that's the biggest dam I've ever seen right there. <laughs> Daddy, how old's that dam? Wonder how much that damn cost. That's the biggest damn I've ever seen. Nobody said a word. They just kept driving. We pull into Northgate Mall, and my father had a philosophy about the Piccadilly. When you hit that parking lot, it's free game. 
you better get in there and you better get you a spot and sue, you get in line, I'll park the car and I'll work my way up there and if the line moves quicker than I anticipate, you know what I want, right? And make sure you get me with them apple dumplings for dessert. He said, me and the boy are going to take a little ride down here and park the car. I felt like that big old brother on the green mile going to the electric chair. Because Daddy wasn't going to park that 77 Pontiac Grand Prix in the first spot. Somebody had door ding him. He parked all the way down, you know, Bledsoe County. He parked all the way down there. We get out. He takes that belt off again. Gave me two more. I said, that wasn't a cuss word. That wasn't a cuss word. No, but we got to beat that smart aleck out of you, boy. <laughs> but learning to read can get you in trouble. And kids read what they see. And man, when I was a little boy, we're going through Chickamauga and we're driving through town and I'm learning to read and I'm all excited and I see things and I'm reading it. And we're in the, I'm in the back seat of that car because back in those days, you would sit in the back seat, but you could stick your head all the way up the front seat. Or you were asleep back there in the very back glass. <laughs> They'd just say, hold on to something, you know, if we get to rocking too far, if something happens. But we're driving through town and I was like, look at there, Bank of Chickamauga. Bet I read that. And my mom was like, Richie, that's good. That's good reading. And then I'm like, well, look at there. Andy Hill Sporting Goods. Look at there. Chickamauga Gas Company. And I'm just reading stuff off. And my dad says, boy, you're doing good. I'm proud of you. And we're sitting at the red light. Notice I said the red light. Because we only had one back then. And I look over out of the corner of my eye in a parking spot, and there's a van right there. Now, today we'd call that a Predator van. <laughs> But back in 1970s, that's just a van. And it had a bumper sticker on it. So little Richie thought he'd read it out loud, so I did. And it said, honk if you're horny. <laughs> My mama bowed her head, just started praying and talking to Jesus. I looked through the rearview mirror and I saw my daddy's 1974 porn mustache quivering in the mirror. <laughs> he was trying not to laugh. So what does a young boy do when he knows his daddy's about to laugh? I just got a little bit louder. Hey, hey, honk if you're horny, daddy. <laughs> my mother looked at him and said, Lynn, do something. So my dad blew the horn two times right there in Chickamauga. <laughs> she says, no, talk to the boy. <laughs> we got home. He goes, you know what that word means? I said, no. He goes, when you get older, I'll tell you. <laughs> My daddy passed in 2019. I never heard what horny meant from him. But thank God for them Zimmerman boys across the street. <laughs> they fill me in. But let me tell you what the Brocks went and saw with the drive-in movie in 1977. We went and saw the number four hit of that year, a little motion picture called Smokey and the Bandit. <laughs> Good old Burt Reynolds, baby. Award-winning actress, Sally Field. The late, great Jackie Gleason. And my man, a.k.a. the snowman. Y'all know the song. Eastbound and down, loaded up and trucking. Sing it with me. We're going to do what they say can't be done. we got a long way to go, and it sure time to get there. I'm eastbound. Just watch your bandit run. Man, that's so, that movie had everything that brought men liked. Fast car, just a little bit of illegal activity, and good looking women. Man, I was in. I was hooked to that movie. My daddy liked that movie so much, the next morning I talked him into something that I'd been pleading my case for for over a year and a half. He allowed me to join the Columbia Record House Club. <laughs> You better Google it, kids. You better Google it. Thirteen albums or eight-track tapes for one penny. I'd been saving that penny for a good year and a half. I didn't read that fine print. You had to buy four in a year, about $49 a piece. But I didn't care, man. I just wanted them. And, man, I got on that list, and I was looking at it. This is before you had Internet, guys, before you had any technology. I had to wait for Sunday morning's paper, Parade Magazine, that insert where it had all those stickers on it, about 300 choices, and then you had to get your magnifying glass out, and then you had to start tearing them things apart, and then you had to lick them. And they taste like behind. 
Not that I know. But it just didn't taste good. And then you've got to put them on a postcard. And then you've got to pray to God, your mailman will actually deliver the thing. Because my mailman was my daddy, and he was going to be one paying for those other four at $49 a pop. I picked out my 13, boy. I was excited. And then I next day, I was like, did you mail it? Did you mail it? Did you mail it? Yes, son, I mailed it. Next day, are they here yet? Are they here yet? Are they here yet? He goes, did you read the fine print? Six to eight weeks. My God, those albums will be vintage by then. But one day in the summer, they came. My daddy made a call from the post office to my grandma's. I stayed at my mamma's in the summer and made the phone call and said, tell the boy the records are here. I got on my 10 speed and I hauled butt down there, got them, came back, ready to listen. My mamma didn't even own a record player. She said, that's the devil. Had to wait all afternoon. But the time came and I got to listen to them records. Let me give you a few that I had. Maybe you remember. I remember getting KC and the Sunshine Band. Do a little dance. Make a little love. Get down tonight. Get down tonight. Boy, that's a good tune right there. I'm telling you. Then I had me another one I like too. The Commodores. My uncle called them the Communists. But I used the Commodores. And they had one called She's a Brick. She's mighty, mighty, just letting it all hang out now. Shake it down, shake it down, shake it down, down. Shake it down, shake it down, shake it down, down. Sing it. Shake it down, shake it down, shake it down, down. Shake it down, shake it down, shake it down, down, down. Now I don't know what shake it down means, but it reminds me of that honk if you're horny. <laughs> but my thirteenth album that I picked was the original motion picture soundtrack of Smokey and the Bandit. That eastbound and down was so good, Jerry Reed made the song sounded just like it, different direction, westbound and down. You can look it up, true story. And I listened to that album over and over, but in between the songs was something called CB Dialogue. <laughs> Basically, that's Jackie Gleason cussing for about 45 seconds. <laughs> and that's where I learned the term, some bitch. Because he called Burt Reynolds a son bitch about 14 times in 45 seconds. And I didn't know what it meant, but I knew it was funny. And I'm in there giggling. My daddy busts through my door and he said, let me tell you something, boy. We love Jerry Reed. He's a good American. But we ain't listened to all that cussing in our house. We pay good money for this house and we ain't going to have it defile all that cussing. So when it gets to that stuff, turn it off. Okay, I will. Next time around, just turn it down. I'm going to get you, you son of a bitch. I'm going to find you, you son of a bitch. Bandit, when I arrest you, you're going to jail, you son of a bitch. And I'm in there giggling. Boy, Richie's in there giggling, having himself a time. And my daddy heard it again. And he came back in, and he opened the record player. And he looked at it, and he saw where it was at. And he took that needle, and he started scratching over that CB dialogue. I know it made me want to say, son of a bitch. But I knew better. I'd been to Piccadilly. <laughs> he said, we just solved that problem. So I got rid of that album for a day or two and played something like the Bay City Rollers or something lame. I don't remember what it was. And I, you know, 13 albums at some point, you're going to pick a dud or two. But then I, a couple days passed, I said, I'm going to try it again. I broke out old Jerry Reed, he's found it down. He got the CB dialogue, and old Jackie Gleason said this, and I quote, Bandit, when I find you, I'm going to lock you up, you son of a bitch, 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 bitch. <laughs> I just went ahead and got up, got the album cover, got the sleeve, took the album out. Daddy's coming in. I said, here you go. He said, boy, I guess you got 12 now instead of 13.